I don't think a space needs to be a perfect representation of what we hope a simple mind looks like. I think a space should be an imperfect representation of the people who are in it and wherever they're at in their life at that given point. A lot of different types of people have come in here and most everyone likes the way this looks. At least that's what they say, maybe they're lying, whatever. This place hasn't been a laundromat since 2005. It hasn't been any sort of functional business in 15 years. I'm Samson, I'm 27 years old. I live in Maspeth, Queens, New York City, New York State. And I pay $1,850 to live in a laundromat. Welcome to my apartment. I lived in a warehouse in Chicago, and I like the freedom of a commercial space, even though there's definitely less tenant rights, but something feels more ethical about moving into a vacant storefront that's been empty for years than taking up an apartment in some residential neighborhood that you're not familiar with. So I was looking on ArtCube and the listings project, and I found this space. I came inside and I looked, and I was with my girlfriend at the time, and she was like, that place is disgusting, and it was disgusting but I moved in the next month. Laundromat. I moved here in March of 2019. When I moved in, the rent was 1750, and so I paid two months rent up front and a security deposit of 875. I end up paying like an average of 120 for electricity and I think 60 bucks for internet. This is the laundromat, or at least it was at one point. Now it's just this. There's a kitchen over there and a bathroom over there, but Aside from that, this is most of the space. This is my organ. I got it on Craigslist Free in Connecticut. If you're ever looking for an organ, go on Craigslist Free. I work in production design, so I get a lot of free furniture afterwards. Everything has to go when the project is over. Make yourself at home. This is the bed. I built this when I first moved in for optimal sunlight reception. I think I built this thing for about 25 bucks. That's why it looks like it does. This is the sign from the original laundromat. I think it's from the 80s originally. This is my little reading nook. I'm not reading too much these days, but I've started all of these books. Of course the laundromat didn't originally have a kitchen, but the guy who was here before me um, built it himself. It's a little small, but I have all the basic necessities. I got a big sink and a little stove top and a little oven, so it works. my little songwriting station. This piano, also a Craigslist free find, and most of the things on it as well. What is that? What is that? What are these? What are these? What is that? What is that? What are those? What are those? What's the blast blast that blast? This is my shower. I didn't intend to move into a place with a window in the shower, but the place kind of came like this. This was um, kind of the most carefully placed feature in the whole place when I arrived. They put in a lot of effort to install a window. Yeah, this is, this is how people get a hold of me. I'll be right here and I get a knock. I say, hey, and I come outside and we talk. The fridge has been here since 2020. Um, a nonprofit brought it by after I said that I was interested, and it's been sustained ever since. It's not really filled by nonprofits anymore, um, but it is filled by the community, and people here do eat from it as well. We got some bread, and some pink salmon, and some paper trays. Sometimes it's more full, sometimes it's less full. I grew up on a commune in Texas, but it was not a cult. David Koresh was not there. It was a humanitarian organization, a nonprofit humanitarian organization. 
and we did a lot of disaster relief and homeless outreach. But most of the people I grew up with had virtually nothing. They were all dirt poor, but they lived together and they helped each other and money just wasn't really a part of it because we just helped each other out. I got mugged in this neighborhood a couple months ago. It's not always safe. Stuff has been stolen, but I'm largely protected by my neighbors. They all look out for me and I couldn't do this thing. I couldn't leave my door open. I couldn't have a fridge out there. I couldn't have a bench outside or a table if I didn't have my neighbors looking out for me. I've got Gabe and MZ and Paul and Aaron. Dave sometimes opens my door at midnight and he's like, lock your door. And so I'll lock the door because Dave tells me to. I don't even remember to lock my door half the time. And so sometimes these people are looking out for me more than I'm looking out for myself. And that's true community. I knew true community as a child and I know it again now. And it's been a while since I've seen it, but it's so wonderful to be in a neighborhood of really? people that know each other awesome. and look out for each other. Minnesota, like, yo, listen, we're having dinner. All right, I'll be right here in 10 minutes. Uh, it's incredible. Samson. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. Good to see you. Jan's Donj. What's up, baby? Agamanita. Back. Come on in, guys. The space primarily is a collaborative space for creation and recording and interaction. I just live here right now because that's what I can afford. But eventually, I'll move out of here and it'll be just a studio space. It'll be just a, an open store for whoever you know wants to come in and learn to paint or continue a painting or learn to record a song or continue a song. It's for beginners and people who are already passionate about what they do. Living in a storefront has taught me resourcefulness in a way that I've never known before. I really can't be too picky about what comes my way, I just have to make the best of it. And that's the greatest skill that I could ask for. It's nothing that I could teach myself, you know, it's something you can only learn from life. And that's really in line with the life philosophy I have. 